You've got three already. There's scores of insurance companies. They're all going to come. We've got a couple big asset managers only. One guy bought 600 million yesterday. I was talking to him. He was like, well, how far are we ahead or behind? I was like, you're on first base in the first <laughs> inning. Yeah, exactly. So we're going to see these movements in these institutional buckets over the next couple of years. And so I think yeah. 50,000 next year may be easy and, and, and 100 or 150,000 the next. That's just as the money moves in. Hey everyone, welcome to Currency.com's channel with your host, John at Real John Doe. We have a surprise in this video for you guys. So sit tight because I will be interviewing one of the biggest Bitcoin bulls, Mike Novogratz, where we will talk about Bitcoin, uh, Ethereum, a little bit of his stories and his overall outlook on crypto and blockchain development for the future. One more thing, if you don't want to miss out on future videos like this, hit that subscribe button because we have plenty more coming. And also, if you do enjoy this video, don't forget to smash that like button. But here we go. Let's play the interview. Okay, and we're live now. So how's it going, everyone? Thanks for tuning in. It's John here with Currency.com. And I have a very special guest to introduce for this video. The one and only Bitcoin godfather, <laughs> Mike <laughs> Novogratz. How's it going, Mike? Thanks for tuning in. Great to be here. Let's not waste any time. Let's get started right on the video. And big thanks for coming on with us. So first thing I want to ask you is what got you into crypto and Bitcoin? And like, what was your story? starting off yeah so you know i have a kind of a cheater story in that i was already rich when i got into it. <laughs> i ran a big hedge fund and i got a call from a partner and he asked me about bitcoin i never heard of it and so i uh, googled it yeah. read about it for 20 minutes you know, vetted by this man or woman named satoshi uh yeah. it was a cool piece of code uh and i was like cool technology but what fascinated me was who was getting excited about it, right? There was libertarians, there were cypherpunks, there were, there were people that wanted to live off the grid. Uh, and it was this backlash against the, the center, backlash against the establishment, uh, like a revolution. Gotcha. And I thought of it, I was like, you know, this was 2012 that you had the European financial crises. We'd had a big financial crisis in 2008 and then a second financial crisis in Europe. And so people were very nervous about the government printing money. And I thought, yeah, it's a pretty good speculative asset. Well, we should buy some because it's going to go up. Um, and I had a friend, Dan Moorhead, who now runs a company called Pantera. He was unemployed at the time. So I called him. I said, Dan, look into this. I think there's something here. And 10 days later, he called back and he was like, dude, it's going to change the world. <laughs> uh, and he gave me all his reasons, much more detailed than my instincts. Yeah. Uh, and we went off to buy some Bitcoin. He bought so much more than I thought he was going to buy. And me and my other partner, Pete Brigger, we were, we were a lot wealthier than Dan at the time. And so we had to at least buy as much as he did. <laughs> and yeah. so we bought a bunch of Bitcoin and it was like $95. Really with the thought of it being a, a speculative just trade. And I thought it would go to a thousand and it went to like eleven yeah, hundred. I wanted to sell it. Yeah. I wanted to sell it. And my partner Pete wouldn't let me. He was like, no, no, it, you know, it's gonna change the world. <laughs> he had he had bought the Bitcoin bug. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, that Bitcoin has 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 treated as well. <laughs> oh yeah. Especially over over the years, it's it's been pretty volatile. Like the first run to a thousand I seen retraced almost almost all the way back to where it started there similar yeah. to how we even went up to 10k came right back down to a thousand so you notice the trends are pretty wide for bitcoin when it reaches new highs well you know it's interesting each time you had i mean if you think about what bitcoin is right it's just a piece of code yeah. that's not what gives us its genius it's a cool piece of code but if we named it novo coin it wouldn't be worth that much we could fork mm -hmm. it right there's a lot of people have forked things and they haven't worked yeah. uh what bitcoin creates its value from is a social construct you and i say it's valuable therefore it's valuable mm -hmm. and and so if you want to think about each of the rallies up and down it was about creating a community of people that thought it was valuable and that community got too excited and burned out okay yeah that makes sense and each time we get a bigger community. So in 2017, when we had that crazy bubble, when all the coins went up, yeah. 
Yeah. It was a global speculative mania. And what I mean by that, it was the first bubble mania that happened not just in one country. Mr. Oh. and Mrs. Kim in Korea were buying, right? Mr. and Mrs. Watanabe in Japan were buying it. You know, the Chen family in China were buying it. Like all yeah. around in India and yeah. in Africa, people were, we never had that. Even in the U.S. stock market bubble in 1999, it was mostly U.S. investors. Yeah. But what was unique, it was all retail. It was all mom and pops and young kids, right? It wasn't institutions. It wasn't, mm -hmm. you know, wealth management platforms. It wasn't insurance companies. And so that bubble got to 20,000, collapsed yeah, all the way back. To and then people thought, oh, man, that was it. And the diehard community kept working on the, the project. Uh, guys like me were working on infrastructure, you know, investing, yeah. in, investing in exchanges, investing in, in custody, trying to convince customers to come in. Right? We, we started Galaxy, my company to be a bridge between the crazy cryptos and institutions. Yeah, yeah. And I love the crazy cryptos. I got involved <laughs> because I like hanging out with the young people and going to those conferences and learning. And, yeah. and I realized there was a real revolutionary spirit. It was fuck the man, right? It was, we got to change yeah. the system because the system doesn't work. Yeah. And when I think about today with Bitcoin going to 23,000, taking up the old high, the Ethereum network really growing fast, stable coins coming, all these spectacularly cool DeFi projects. Yeah. You know, it's more needed now than ever because the system really doesn't work, right? We were saying this before we got on. Yeah. We're in the middle of a COVID crisis and the top 0.1% are making fortunes making because we're fortune, inflating yeah. assets and everyone assets. else is suffering a little bit. Like the instability in our country uh, is as high as it's been since I've been alive and I'm 56. Yeah. Uh, and so now more than ever, the blockchain ethos, the crypto ethos has a role. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I think the next generation coming in, this is going to be a pretty big transfer compared to what has been happening for the past 20, 30, 40, 50 years. And it's two different roles. So the one role is, okay, we're going to protect our wealth by owning some Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. That's It's just like digital gold, right? So that's, yeah. that's a smart thing. We own a lot of Bitcoin in Galaxy. I own a lot of Bitcoin. I think it's going to go a lot higher. Mm -hmm. um, that's bucket one. Bucket two is cooler in some ways, which is how do we rebuild financial infrastructure? So how do we create a, a system where everyone's got a, you know, their, their wallet on their phone instead mm -hmm. of a bank account and that they can just tap flip, flip money to you just as easy. I can send you a, a picture of me and my cool hat. Yeah, <laughs> I can see the picture on one of 19 apps anywhere in the world, but I yeah. can't send money. Money, that yeah, sense. that's one thing that still needs a. Or app. I can't, buy, or I can't buy insurance, or I can't lend my coins, and so all of that financial infrastructure is going to move to a blockchain-based world sometime in the next 15 years. Um, that will take the rents away from the banks. I think about it, how stupid it is. You, you're a young kid and you've got 200 bucks in your bank account. Cause that's what I, that's all. That was a lot for me. And you yeah. want to take out 25 bucks from the ATM and it charges you 350 to take it out. Yeah. It's like, wait a minute, that's a 15% freaking fee to get my money. Mm -hmm. Uh, it should be free. Should be, when yeah. I was a kid, long distance used to cost $2 a minute. Now it's free. Yeah, exactly. So, so money is kind of the next, next phase to come for has technology to has to be. Yeah. And I think and not it. So that, Listen, we can take the rents away from the people that had them and spread them out. That'll help with the wealth gap. The bigger story could be how do you – so the, the macro story of the, of the last 40 years was labor share of income mm -hmm. got smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. So if you were a working man, you just got screwed. Period. End of story. Yeah. Um, and if you were in the intellectual capital business, right, you did really well. Now we have companies like Uber, right? Think about Uber, amazing company. Yeah. Travis uh, Kolachnik uh, smashed regulations, walls, built this bold company. All the profits really 
ended up with him, his venture backers, his, his, his rich guys that backed him. Yeah. And so this, you know, 40, 50, 60 billion dollar company, the value created ended up in a small group of hands. Mm-hmm. When you think about who really created Uber, it was an army of immigrants, immigrants uh, yeah. you know, so cab they- drivers who switched over to become Uber drivers, yeah. you know, people who took a second job. So it was a labor business. There's nothing yeah. to Uber, but labor. Yeah. Right? It's they not just, like they they're, just, they're just a bridge in the middle. But other than that, it's strictly labor. And so, yeah. <clears throat> you could imagine a crypto version of an Uber where each of the drivers, as they participated more, were owning more of the 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 to- token pool or yeah. riders use tokens were engineers that you could have a vibrant ecosystem where the gains were spread out. And you're yeah. seeing that in DeFi now and some of these new, yeah. the more you use, the more you, you, uh, you own. For more trading videos, just like this, please subscribe to our channel.